Hi, and welcome to the History Lessons in the Dupedia World. We are continuing our lesson on life, how was life for ancient Romans. We started talking about the discovery of Pompeii. What amazing things it has given to us. And we've already seen what happened in that fatal day of the eruption of Vesuvius on 24th of October 79 AC. Now I want to go into one of the uniqueness of Pompeii. One of those things that has made that discovery exceptional. And this is the case of the casts of Pompeii. Let's remember the casts are what the a group of archaeologists found. We remember the lead archaeologist Fiorelli started finding many hollow spaces with ashes and bones as they were digging the site of Pompeii. Luckily, at some point, they decided to try and pour plaster into the hollow spaces to discover what had been there. What they did was they poured the plaster inside, waited for it to harden, and then they started removing the outside materials and they were astonished by the results because they had an imprint, a print of a human body. They discovered that these holes that they were just finding ashes were the space left by the decomposed bodies of the victims. Thanks to this Nowadays, we have this last moment of the population of Pompeii. And as you'll see, they are not just figurines, they're really detailed. The technique that uh, they were using was to pour in so we have the body that would have been covered by ashes and by all the debris. You'd pour the plaster. When you find found a hole, you would normally have to also make two holes, one for the plaster and the other for the air to come out. And then you would have to wait a certain amount of time and then you could remove the mold this cast that contains the figure of the body. This technique enabled archaeologists not to have only one part of the puzzle, that was the standing buildings, but the whole picture with the people that lived there, their dead image frozen at the moment of their death. The technique has actually changed during the years. Now it's possible to use a uh, resin that makes it easier to study the bones and the objects that they were carrying. For example, there's one of the casts that had earrings and jewelry and thank you to pouring um, a material that you can see through able to see how they wore this and not damage it or lose it. It's also important not to damage the bones. Um, at the start, the first casts had ma damaged some of the bones. Now the techniques that they are using have adapted to the needs of these casts. Uh, the resin is not used in all the cases now 
because of its costs and also you don't have that many examples. Um, most cases it's still there's still a preference for plaster but as I said use more carefully so you wouldn't damage it. It's not that bad idea as you can see with x-rays and uh, rec 3D reconstruction scans you can see and study the contents inside the plaster molds this casts the study of this human remains is so rich in detail some of them you can see and study as if you had the body just there. Hairstyles have been reconstructed, clothing. You can see from this example of a four-year-old, you can distinguish the clothes that he was wearing, how, was he, were, how he was wearing them, the style of that moment, the fashion. In some cases, there's even the facial features to know how they look like, what were the most common features around the, po the population in Pompeii. For example, the, thanks to the clothing, there was a previous idea that uh, Roman clothing would have been skimpy, revealing short dresses because of the idea they had of how Romans had the morale, how they acted, especially with the warm weather and being a resort for people uh, in summer, you would think that the clothing would be shorter. Actually, that idea was completely refused as most of the cast revealed the victims were heavily clad they had cloaks that wrapped them thick dresses their heads in many cases were covered and some even wore trousers so we've been able to cast away some of these pre ideas pre-created ideas from this roman world It's, we have about, it's counted about 1,150 bodies found in Pompeii, but only around 100 are in cast at the moment. And most of them were made during the 19th century. These, it's worth mentioning, that have needed lots of restoration and delicate care because of the time and the materials that were used in the 19th century that have changed a lot. We've uh, talked and we've seen that we had human bodies obviously but they are not the only ones. There's also really curious examples that we're gonna talk about like pigs, there's a dog, there's even bread that's been found. The example of the dog is probably one of the most famous ones if you've seen pictures of Pompeii. This dog was discovered in one of the houses, the house of Marcus Vesonius Primus, in the corridor of the entrance. Uh, there's not that much to say, we can clearly see that this poor animal was left behind, the, its um, owners didn't unleash him, uh, he was chained to the house with a collar and was struggling to release himself when sadly probably the poisonous gas or the heat killed him. It is a, quite a disturbing picture, but it reflects very well the reality of those last moments of that horrible day. 
Also, you can see the type of dog that Romans had, as well of as the type of collar, and seeing that that hasn't changed a lot. You just put a collar on dog and chain him to somewhere. The other really curious example that has given us quite a lot of information is a loaf of bread. The original bread would have been carbonized, it's believed, and that is what actually it helped the, the shape keep for longer. If it had been a fresh bread, it wouldn't have probably uh, stayed for long enough to leave the shape in the ashes. Obviously, <laughs> it's believed that someone forgot about it in the bakery. They had more important things to attend in this emergency, so they left the bread, it burned, and now we've got it. We know that Pompeians ate a lot of bread and that there was normally hard bread made from coarse flour. If you were poor, you wouldn't really afford raised loaves like this one. This was one of the loaves of a good, well, this one's would be quite expensive. And it explains and gives us context on Pompeii that was for rich people. When you look at it, the first thing that strikes to the observer is uh, these strange marks on one of these sides, right? With the letters. Well, it's actually a bread stamp. There's been, the stamps have been conserved and they had been found, but you hadn't really seen how they were used. So this example gives us this information. For you to know, it was used either to give proof from where it came, if it was a renowned bakery for example, because bakers actually had guilds and there was a real strong control over the bakers and the price of the bread. So, a stamp bread would indicate that it was from a good certificate and quality baker. Maybe sometimes it was for clients because um, generally people didn't have ovens for bread so they depended on the local baker and you would need to mark that bread in order to give it back to the family, the correct family. Also, um, you had quite a lot of bread that was distributed freely. You've probably heard uh, that it was common in festivals or games to distribute bread. Um, it's a circus and bread culture. There's expressions in various lang Latin languages that use this. Well, you had these loaves of bread that were free and they had to be marked to be, be able to distinguish them from the others, obviously. And if you're asking yourself, these slashes weren't only to divide the bread and make it uh, more easily breakable, but to give it a particular shape and bakers have explained that this is so it wouldn't burst. So we actually have an exact reproduction saying what Romans in Pompeii ate. That is amazing. From many of the casts you you see them that they have this contorted posture that could make us think that it was because they suffered a really painful death and I hope this is not. It is disturbing to a point but I would like to mention that volcanologists have said that it's not the case. Uh, there was 
various waves, heat waves, but one of the most intensive heat um, waves from the volcano, from the hot air, would have been up to 300 degrees centigrade, 572 Fahrenheit. That would have killed most of the people, hundreds of people, in less than a second. These postures of the bodies are because of cadaveric spasms. So it's not result of the people struggling. Uh, I'm not saying that they had a completely peaceful death, but this is not the result of agony. It's just the how the body reacts to the heat and then it just goes back into the rigor mortis. That said, um, it does carry a high emo emotional power to be observing these casts. We've seen family groups that are almost brought back to life. The picture we've got here is a mother with her toddler that would they would she would be probably trying to calm him down in this terrifying situation and as uh, the conservator Stefania Giudice said it can be very moving handling these remains when we apply the palaster even though it happened 2,000 years ago it could be a boy it could be a mother or family this is human archaeology not just archaeology because only the hardest of hearts would remain completely unmoved by this. This is people that were clinging to life and were scared and didn't know what was happening. They are mothers with children, husbands with wives, humans as us, although 2,000 years ago. I would like to just end with the quote of Pliny the Young to remember in which situation these people found themselves. The buildings were now shaking with violent shocks and seemed to be swaying to and fro as it were torn from their foundations. Outside, on the other hand, there was danger of falling plumber stones, even though these were light and porous. However, after comparing the risks, they chose the latter. In my uncle's case, one reason outweighed the other, but for the others, it was choice of fears. As protection against falling objects, they put pillows on their heads, tied down with cloths. Many people did flee Pompeii, but there's a large number that stayed. And they stayed because they thought they were going to be safe inside their houses, or because they were too scared to flee. They didn't know what was happening to them. The world was crumbling. And those who didn't get away ended up giving the testimony with their own bodies. That now, if you go to Pompeii in Italy, in Naples, you can still find these casts inside each of the houses. And this is this part on the casts, this really unique and specific part of the dig of Pompeii. We'll continue with the next lessons. I hope you enjoyed this one and see you 